This presentation aims to explain the definition and methodology of social life cycle assessment or social LCA as well as the different steps for its realization. The United Nations Environmental Programme defines social LCA as a methodology to assess the social impacts of products and services across their life cycle, for example from the extraction of raw materials to their end of life phase like disposal. Social LCA provides information on social and socio-economic aspects for decision-making in the prospect of improving the social performance of an organization and, ultimately, the well-being of stakeholders. Social LCAs are complementary to environmental LCAs or organizational environmental footprint studies. The social LCA framework is based on the guidelines and the methodological sheets of UNEP, as well as the 17 Sustainable Development Goals and the ISO 1440 standard. It offers a systematic evaluation framework that combines quantitative and qualitative data. In social LCA, it is important to assess a range of relevant social themes or indicators and particularly how they contribute positively or negatively to sustainable development goals. In the incoming slides, we will define different social themes and identify the social development goals that can be associated to each of them. Now, let us present the main steps to conduct a social life cycle assessment. The first step is to define the goal and the scope of the study, as well as identify and assess the relevance of different social indicators or social teams, as well as different groups of stakeholders. The second step is to prepare the data collection process for different indicators or themes that were identified as relevant in the first step. The third step is to proceed to the quantitative, qualitative and semi-qualitative data collection through interviews and online surveys. Finally, the last step consists in scoring and interpreting the results, validation and the identification of potential for improvement. During the goal and scope phase, we start by identifying relevant stakeholders, in other words, individuals or groups that are concerned directly or indirectly by an organization's activities or decisions. The different categories of stakeholders to be considered in social LCA are employees, the local community, actors in the value chain, consumers, society, and children. For each of these stakeholder groups, there are several specific social themes for which data should be collected. For instance, for the employee category, social subthemes include child labor, the number of working hours, fair salaries, etc. Similarly, there are multiple social themes for each other stakeholder category. In the next slides, we will provide a few examples for each of them. The social themes associated with employees include the freedom of association and collective bargaining team. This team is related to three sustainable development goals, decent work and economic growth, reduced inequalities, and peace, justice, and strong institutions. The child labor team is also included for the employee stakeholder group. It allows us to check if conditions are favorable for the occurrence of child labor. Other examples include the fair salary and the working hour themes. The fair salary theme allows to verify the compliance of practices concerning wages with established standards and meeting legal requirements, whether it is above, meeting or below industry average and whether it can be considered as a living wage. The working hours team allows to verify if the hours effectively worked are in accordance with the ILO standards and if compensation in terms of money or free time is planned and provided to the workers when overtime occurs. Also included for the employees category are forced labor, equal opportunities and discrimination, health and safety, and the social benefits and social security teams. For example, the Equal Opportunities and Discrimination team allows assessing the equal opportunities in management practices and the presence of discrimination in the opportunities offered to the workers. It is linked to SDGs 1, 4, 5, 8 and 10. The final social themes for employees are the Employment Relationship team, which corresponds to the relations between employees and employers, the Sexual Harassment theme, and the Smallholders, including Farmer theme, identifying peculiarities of smallholders, including farmers, especially regarding the endowment of factors of production, the role played by the family, etc. For the brevity of this presentation, we will not go into details for the other stakeholder categories, however, we will still list the different indicators that are 
uh, implying these different stakeholder categories in the next slides. So if you would like some additional details for these uh, impact categories, do not hesitate to pause the videos to have a read. We are now switching to the local community stakeholder category. It includes access to material resources, access to immaterial resources, and delocalization and migration. Other themes included for the local community stakeholder group are cultural heritage, respect of indigenous rights, and safe and healthy living conditions. The three last indicators for this stakeholder group are community engagement, local employment, and secure living conditions. On to the Value Chains Actors Stakeholder Group, we have the fair competition and the promoting of social responsibility. The other themes included for the Value Chain Actors Stakeholder Groups are the supplier relationships, the respect of intellectual property rights, as well as wealth distribution. We now switch to the Consumer Stakeholder Group. The first three indicators included in this group are health and safety, feedback mechanism, and consumer privacy. The other two indicators included for the consumer stakeholder group are transparency and end-of-life responsibility. Within the society stakeholder group, we have seven different indicators. The first two are public commitment to sustainability issues and the contribution to economic development. The next two are prevention and mitigation of armed conflicts and technology development. And finally, we have the corruption, the ethical treatment of animals, and the poverty alleviation indicators. We now conclude with the children stakeholder category. Only three indicators are included in this category, and these are the education provided in the local community, health issues for children as consumers, and children concerns regarding marketing practices. To summarize this presentation, you can see here all of the different indicators that are included for different stakeholder groups. As a first step for social LCAs, we will need to identify the different uh, hotspots in terms of indicators that might be of interest for a given study. Then, as a second step, we will need to prepare the data collection process, which means preparing surveys, for instance, uh, that might help us get the information needed to evaluate all of these different indicators. As a third step, we'll proceed with the quantitative, qualitative, and semi-qualitative data collection through interviews, online surveys, and also looking for additional and complementary information in literature when needed. And finally, as the fourth step of the social LCA, we'll proceed to the scoring and interpretation of results based on the collected data, the validation and the identification of potentials for improvement linked to the study. Thank you for following this presentation and for your eventual contribution to online surveys. Any questions can be addressed to info at